Hey guys, um, I've been getting a lot of questions about ear posting and what method I use. Currently, I'm using the back rod method. Um, it's a method that's been around forever. There's uh, many different variations of it. I'm gonna show you guys in this video the method that I use that has given me really nice results. Um, I tweaked it a little, so um, there's a lot of videos out there that have this same method. This is just the way I do it. Uh, first things first, these are the ear wipes that I use. They're called malacidic wipes. Um, they are antimicrobial and anti-fungal. Um, so I like them, they clean well, the ear dries up really nicely from them and they do not dry out the ear, but you can also still apply tape after using them. So obviously, first thing you do, you make sure you clean your puppy's ears. Uh, make sure to really get in there, get all of that gunk out, and then let the ears dry before you post. Always, always, you have to have dry ears with posts. So even if, let's say it's raining, your dog goes outside, gets his post wet, make sure you take him out, dry up the ear, and then repost again. Never let your dog go with wet ears and posts. Now, as far as things that you're going to need, you're going to need foot powder. I use Gold Bond. Um, it's antifungal. Um, it's also will help, you know, with the itching and it absorbs the moisture really well. Um, cotton pads. I currently have these ones. I actually prefer the square ones that are kind of thicker and you get them at Walmart. But for now I have these, so I'm just going to cut them into a square. Zonus tape. This is Johnson & Johnson's porous cloth Zonus tape. Um, I currently still have the one inch, but they have discontinued it. Uh, for this method, the nice thing is you can also use the one and a half inch, you can use the two inch. So whatever um, you can find is fine. Athletic tape also works, just make sure it's porous and you don't want it to be stretchy because then it can tighten on your dog's ear and constrict blood flow. So this is what I use or just find an equivalent to it. Um, then we need duct tape and we need backer rod. On little babies, I'll use the half an inch backer rod. On um, older puppies, I will use the five eighths, which is a little thicker. I find that when they're very little, the one, uh, the half an inch backer rod is easier to get all the way down into their ear. And then of course you'll need scissors. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the backer rod and you want to put it deep into your dog's ear as far as it will go. You will not hurt them. And then while you're stretching the ear upwards, measure how long you need it. I always say go about an inch above what you actually need and just kind of hold it there. And then you're going to cut. Now for the other ear, you do not have to do the same thing. Just make the other piece the same length as the first piece you just made. So. we go okay so now that we have our two pieces we're going to take duct tape and when you're using them uh, the half an inch backer rod it's very very flimsy so what you do is you put the duct tape on the table like this just an approximate length you're gonna take your backer rod make sure you're holding it nice and straight and apply it so it is about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of your duct tape. You apply it to the edge and then with even pressure, you roll it onto itself. So you get this. Don't worry about the access, we'll deal with that later. So like I said, when you're using the half an inch backer rod, duct tape is failing me today. When you're using the half an inch backer rod, you do wanna do about five to seven layers of the duct tape just to make it strong enough. So you just repeat this process five to seven times. Now on the five eighths, you're probably gonna be good at, with like three to four times, but really just kind of play it by ear. Um, and you'll see like when it stops being super easily bending, then you have enough. Now, one important thing to note when you're applying the duct tape and rolling the zip tie, uh, the backer rod onto it, Please make sure you're rolling it evenly. Please make sure that there is no divots, no bumps, um, no folds, because later when you put that in your dog's ear, it will bother them. 
So really, really try to apply it as evenly as you possibly can, which is why I say just use even pressure and kind of roll it out with both of your hands. So once we have it supported enough to the point where we are happy with the strength, so we're getting there. This is pretty good actually right now. See, like it still has give, but it's actually like bouncing right back. So once we have that, what we're going to do, and this is why I told you guys to leave about an inch over your dog's ear. Once it's rolled, you're gonna find where the back rod ends and you're gonna cut about quarter, one eighth of an inch right below where it ends. Cause if you cut it above, this is what you end up with. See how it kind of sticks like that? But if you find where your back rod ends and cut it right below that area, you will get still a nice circle. So now that we have this, we're going to take a cotton pad. Again, if you have a square, you don't have to cut it. Since I do not, I do have to cut it in a nice square just to make it a little less um, bulky. I'm going to take about two inches of my tape And this area where we left the back rod exposed, we're gonna put our cotton pad on top of it, kind of roll it around it, and then we will secure it as tightly as we can without actually compromising the integrity of the back rod itself. We are gonna tape it to the bottom of the post. So you end up with a post that looks like this. Now that I have both of my posts made, I'm actually gonna check the length of them. And as you notice, I haven't cut this part off yet. That is because I want them to be the exact same length. So I'll kind of hold them side by side and I will cut the other one. So I have two posts that are the same length. This is very important because even though these posts are still not too long for the puppy, Having them the same length gives you a very good visual as far as how far on each post to pull the ear up. When you're posting, it's really important that you're stretching the ears equally. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a situation where one looks shorter than the other. So having the post the same length gives you a very helpful aid as far as whether you're stretching them equally or not. So you always wanna make sure that with your posts, when you're done posting, they're both shoved in as deep as they can go, but then the ear ends at the same place. Now, the one thing that I do like about backer rod is that it gives you a little more ability to adjust the ear, you know, from this or that direction. So um, because it's round, you can kind of wrap the ear around it. With zip ties, it used to be just, you know, putting it straight on. Whereas here, you can really adjust that ear as you're pulling it up, which I will show you in a little bit. Now, once we're at this part where the posts are made, we're going to take our Zonus tape and we start taping it onto right above where the cotton pad is. So you tape it on a little like that, then you're gonna back roll it. So you're gonna back tape it onto itself and you just work your way up. And again, be careful that you're not getting like too many folds or whatever. Since we left the post about an inch longer than it needed to be, you don't have to go all the way up. But this is what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna do that same thing on this side. Now, another thing that I really like about this particular method is that it does not require glue. At least the way I've been doing it, it hasn't required glue. I know some people do complain about that post popping out. Most of the time that's because you haven't put them deep enough, but you can still apply glue to these, but I think this is sufficient. The stickiness of the tape is more than sufficient. Plus with this method, you're only gonna leave the posts in for three days rather than five to seven like um, the zip tie method. So they gotta be changed every three days anyway because the dog has a lot of stuff in their ear. So with that said, I really don't see the purpose of the glue, but if you do need to use glue, you can use TorBots. Now, 
once you have your post built, um, one of the things I also wanted to address is pockets. Uh, you might have heard this a lot of times, like your dog has pockets, your dog has pockets, and you're not quite sure what it means. When we refer to pockets, what we're talking about is when your dog's ears, instead of standing parallel and straight up like this, they start to lean in. Now, sometimes it, they can literally just overlap like this. Sometimes it's ever so slight where even like just a little bit of a twist inwards and then out, it, that's also a pocket. So at any point, if the ear, even from just from the base or the whole ear tends to kind of lean in a little bit, that is a pocket. Um, it's not always super obvious. Um, sometimes it is, but anything that kind of curves from the base inwards, that's a pocket. The way you can eliminate pockets is two ways, actually. You can take about an inch of your back rod and then take it, cut it like this long ways. Then you're gonna take each half and apply it right above where your um, back tape starts. So just stick it on there. Don't squeeze too hard because you still, you definitely want to have that bump on there. So that's called a bumper. Pretty self-explanatory <laughs> with the name. So that's your option number one. Option number two is leaving these posts longer than the ear. So if you leave them about half an inch, three quarters of an inch longer than the ear, the weight of the post is going to weigh the ears this way rather than letting them, you know, curl in. And the third thing is do not make, if you have pockets, either don't use a bridge, make a solid bridge or do not make your bridge tight. If you do have to use a bridge because your puppy's getting bothered by it and you know, the ears are just flailing everywhere. When you put the bridge on, let the ear stand like this rather than like tying the bridge like that. Let them kind of stand like this and then go from there. I know I look ridiculous, but anyways, now to, off to posting. Next thing I'm going to do is I am going to apply just a little bit of powder in my puppy's ears. Now again, remember her ears have been cleaned and they have been dried and I massage them after I took the pulse out. So you can massage them a little bit to get that blood flow going. So she was already prepped. So when you take your post, your bumper is gonna go to the ear. So see the bumper is facing towards the dog. What you want to do is you want to pull the ear up and open the earlobe, and then you stick that post in as deep as it will go. Do not worry, you are not gonna hurt your dog, and you might have to like work really hard to wiggle it in, but see, it has to really get in there. Now, this is what I love about this method. If you wanna have that nice and flush look rather than a little bit of a fanned out look, you're gonna grab the ear and twist it a little bit to the front. So just twist that ear, not too much. There we go. So what I did, as you saw, I didn't put the post in and just stick the ear on straight. I actually rather twisted the ear a little bit to the front and then I stuck it on. Now I'm gonna take one of the long pieces of tape and I'm gonna angle it upwards when I'm attaching it to the back of rod. So this fold right here, you wanna push it back so it needs to follow the tape. Always tape from back to front. So we put the tape on. Be careful not to over tighten the tape. The ear needs room to breathe. That tape is just in place to hold the post. It's not supposed to restrict blood flow so then the second tape i'm still gonna also i'm gonna stagger it about halfway up on the other tape back to front and again angled upwards and then when you're bringing it down you angle it downwards now my third shorter tape is going to go up to the tip and that one can be stuck on straight you don't have to angle it anywhere be careful there is no need to tighten these. As you can see, I'm not pulling the tape. I'm not tugging on it. I'm literally just folding it over. There is zero need to tighten the tape. It's just there to hold the ear in place. If you tighten the tape, honestly, you can lose an ear. Like you're either gonna get really bad sores or you can lose the whole tip of your dog's ear. 
So that's what it looks like. I will show you a close up by the end. Now she does have a pocket on her left ear. So rather than cutting this tip off, I'm actually gonna leave it there to help weigh down her ear. So in this instance, I'm using all three methods combined. I'm using the bumper, I'm using the longer post, and I'm not applying a bridge because she actually does carry her ears nicely. She's actually overextending one. What a good girl. Make sure your puppy knows that this is a good, good environment to be in. As you can see, she's very calm. She feels nice here. And that's why I'm able to post by myself rather than need somebody to help me hold her. Because she knows this is actually very pleasant. Now, again, I'm going to show you one more time. So we're going to push, pull the ear up, open up her ear. Yeah, I say I love you too. Yes, I do. I do. So we open up her ear, shove this in as far as it will go. And again, when I'm applying it, when I'm applying it, I'm not gonna just stick it on straight up. Sorry, sorry, she wants to lay down now. That's how relaxed she is. <laughs> so I'm not gonna push it straight up. I'm gonna twist it just a little. Twist it just a little to the, for to the front. And here's why, let me show you a better look. So just to try and demonstrate with one hand, if I put this ear on just straight up, look at this gap right here. But if I twist the ear when I'm applying it, what happens is that gap closes. So that is what's going to help you get really nice and flush ears. Okay, so again, we're shoving it in as far as it will go. We're twisting the ear slightly forward towards the nose. We're stretching it an equal amount compared to the other post. You can't sleepy now. As you can see, Nora is so relaxed that she actually wants to go fall asleep on me. And again, when we're applying the base tape, we're angling it upward. And I'll explain here in a second why. So we angle upward going to the front of the head, and then we angle downward going back. And I'll show you here in one second why that's done and what the purpose that it achieves is. Okay, let's see. So here's why. By angling that tape upward, oh my gosh. <laughs> You're going to fall off. By angling the tape upwards, you are releasing the tape for getting, from getting too close to this and also too close here. Honestly, I could have put this tape slightly higher, but filming this video, it's making it a little hard to get everything where it, exactly where it needs to be. But ideally, you do not want the base tapes to be touching the tip of their head. So... Ideally, these tapes would have actually been about a quarter an inch higher because when you have this situation, that's when you also get rubbing. But like I said, if I would have positioned this properly, it would have actually angling that tape upwards and then coming back down on the return. First of all, it accommodates for the fact that the ear is um, wider here and then thinner up here, but it also helps you avoid the tape touching their head. Now, this isn't going to do anything to her so i'm gonna leave it as is but ideally it would have been about a quarter of an inch higher so when all is said and done this is the look you're going for um i actually forgot to put a piece of tape up here so this should be also double taped but honestly i'm more worried about this tip bending so this one is the more important one right now to have two pieces of tape for extra support because this one is standing perfectly straight now that being said so because she has a pocket on her left ear, I'm gonna leave that post a bit longer, as you can see, <laughs> or not. Um, so I'm gonna leave that post a little longer and I'm not gonna attach a bridge. Also, she has a bumper put in. Now I'm gonna show you how to cut the other post without hurting the ear. Okay, Nora. Now, when cutting the access, like if you don't have pockets and you want the post to be just the length of the ear, when you're cutting off the axis, this is how you do it. You see where the ear ends. You're gonna put your fingers right above it just to protect it so you don't accidentally cut it. 
And then while holding the ear the whole time, you are going to cut it off. And there we go. So it's as simple as that. Now, when you go to take off the posts, you're gonna shimmy your scissors this way and make sure they come all the way out to the end. Don't go close to this edge because then you run a risk of cutting the fold. So try and stay more on this side. You shimmy the scissors underneath, come out all the way on the end and kind of lift up the tape to make sure you're not cutting the ear. Do the same here and then cut it. Or because we're only using a few pieces of tape, you can also find where you met them, just unfold them and that's that. There's no glue, so it should be pretty easy. Alrighty.